Hi there, I'm Mr. Dulis, and let's do a little lesson on waves, uh, specifically sound waves. And so here's what we've got going on. I have uh, some tuning forks of various sizes, so various frequencies. Give them a little bit of a hit and you can hear them. And then I'm gonna hold it over this tube. See that there's water inside of this bigger tube. And I'm going to elevate this tube so that way it's effectively changing the length of this tube here because the sound is gonna go in and bounce and reflect off of that water that's in there. So let's show you what's gonna happen. Can you hear that resonance? Let's give this thing another hit just to make sure it's really going. And when it resonates, you can really tell because the, the sounds are reflecting in such a way to where the nodes and anti-nodes are staying just in the right spot. So let's kind of take a look at what's happening there. So if this is our uh, water at the bottom and here's our smaller tube, we have our tuning fork and we'll treat the uh, sort of pinkish color here to be the onset wave. So this is the wave that is coming from the tuning fork. And so that wave is, uh, is coming down and it hits the water and reflects. It reflects to the other side, so it doesn't come to the same side because it's a sort of a hard fixed spot the water is. It is going to reflect, so the teal color is the reflected wave and it's going to come back out. And you'll notice that this is the standing wave. So we have constructive and destructive interference that occurs and this is effectively the, uh, the standing wave that occurs. So at this location, we're gonna always have destructive interference. This is known as a node, okay? So here we have a node, and here we have constructive interference at all times. This is an anti-node. So with an open end of a tube, there's no restriction there. There's restriction at the water, so there's a node there. There's no restriction at the open end, and so this is where the anti-node is. Node, anti-node, node, anti-node, anti and so on. And so the wave continues up, but we want to focus down here at the part that's in the tube. And we also want to take notice as to how much of the wave is in the tube. So as I bring this thing up and I get to that spot, mind you that the frequency of the tuning fork obviously does not change. The speed of sound in this room does not change. And we have this fancy equation where that the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. And so since the uh, speed of sound into the room doesn't change, the frequency of the tuning fork doesn't change, the wavelength is not going to change. So as I move this tube up and down, this wavelength is not changing. I'm just simply changing how much of the wave is actually in the tube because this is forcing the vibrations within that tube. So as I bring this up, what I would be doing is I'm bringing it up to where the anti-node is. If I were to bring it up further, I could even bring it up to the next anti-node, and that would be the next harmonic. But we can kind of get to that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual measurements. So, and in fact, if I go back to this one more time, you will recognize that this is the complete wave, right? So to right here, right, that spot right there, that is where there's a complete wave. So this, this is half of the wave to there, and you must notice that is one fourth of the wave to there. So when I bring it up to that first harmonic, when I first hear that sound, that is gonna be the first harmonic and one fourth of the wave is going to be in the tube. So let's go ahead and take a measurement. So we're gonna take this tuning fork. This tuning fork is 512 Hertz. So 512 times per second, this thing is vibrating back and forth. It's literally just doing this back and forth 512 times per second. And so let's go ahead and take a measurement. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna hold that steady and take a measurement. And we are looking at 15.6 centimeters. Okay, so 15.6 centimeters. So that's uh, 0 0.156 meters. But there's another, another measurement that we actually should do if we want to be precise and accurate with this. I'm going to measure the width of the tube itself. The, me the width of the tube itself is just shy of, of four centimeters. Uh, I could say that it's uh, 
about 3.8 centimeters. So the width of the tube is 0 0.038 meters. Okay, so we're going to wind up using those measurements in a little bit. Okay, so what do we do with that? Hmm, well, we've got this. Okay, so here's my instructions that I have written out. Two diameter. We said that was, you know, use pink, a nice pink color. Tube diameter, that was uh, 0 0.038 meters. And uh, so we're going to take 40% of that tube diameter and we're going to add that to the air column length. The air column length was that 0.156 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, so in fact, um, so there's an air column length and then there's an adjusted air column length is really how I should have it. So I'm going to say that this is the adjusted, right? This is, this is going to be the adjusted. Okay, so that's poorly written, but that's the adjusted air column length. And so the air column length, um, I'm just going to highlight that. The air column length was uh, 0.156 meters. Okay, and so this will become my adjusted air column length. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do that measurement. We will say that the 0 0.038 meters uh, plus the 0.156 meters that was in the tube. So this is basically the adjusted length uh, or the adjustment that I have to make to this. Actually, I actually have to take 40% of that, excuse me. So I'm gonna take this amount, the 0 0.038, and I'm gonna take 40% of it. Okay, and that gets me 0 0.0152. I'm gonna add that to the 0.156. Okay, and my adjusted air column length is 0 0.1712. Okay, 0 0.1712. Okay, so what does that mean and why did we do it? So, in truth, the antinode is not exactly at the uh, open end of the tube. It's a little bit above. So the antinode is actually just a little bit above, and it's dependent on the width of the tube. So that's why we have to make this, uh, this air column adjustment. So the air column adjustment to get to the antinode means that rather than being 0.156 meters, right, that's that measurement that I took, it's instead a little bit further. So it's 0.1712 meters. And so now I'm gonna take that and I wanna find the wavelength. So what is the wavelength? The wavelength is going to be, wait, hold on, uh, how much of the wave is in the tube? So if, uh, if one fourth, if you remember one fourth, okay, let's get this again. Right, one fourth of the wave is actually in the tube. So then that means, right, so one fourth of the wave is in the tube. And so we're gonna multiply that by the reciprocal, which is four over one, or just otherwise known as one, or excuse me, four. Uh, the reason why I'm putting over one, because I want you to understand that in the next harmonic, haha, let's look at that real quick. If I were to bring that tube up, right, if I bring that tube up to the next harmonic, to where it gets to the next antinode, then three fourths of the wave would be in the tube. So then I would have to multiply my air column length by four thirds to find the wavelength. But I digress and let's go ahead and complete this measurement. So we're gonna take this measurement here, okay? And we're gonna multiply that by four. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the point 0.1712 multiplied by four gives us a wavelength of Point six eight four eight. Point six eight four eight. Okay, so let's find the speed of sound, the velocity or speed of sound in this room. So that's going to be the wavelength times the frequency. So the wavelength is the point six eight four eight times the frequency. We said that was a five hundred and twelve hertz. Uh, tuning fork. So let's go ahead and multiply those two numbers together. And that gives us a speed of 350, 350 meters per second. Is that the actual speed of sound in this room? No, not exactly. 
um, I can probably be a little bit more precise with my measurements. And of course, it, it's only one trial. Usually after many, many trials, we actually get a pretty precise number, even in the classroom environment. Um, the speed of sound typically in a room and the speed of sound in this room is about 343, 343 meters per second. In fact, let's go ahead and run these numbers again. Okay, so I'm gonna erase all of these. Actually, I think the one thing that we will keep is um, how much of the wave is in the tube, because we're going to still do the first harmonic for the next one. So let's try this again. So let's do um, 320 hertz. Okay, 320 hertz is what we're going to do this time. And let's try this again. Maybe we'll get an even better measurement. Sounds like there's one there, doesn't it? But it's false, ha ha. It's a false harmonic. There it is, you can really tell the difference. Okay, let me get a hand down so I can. Ah, it sounds pretty good right there. Okay, let's measure it to the surface of the water, to the top of the poop, uh, tube. So it would help if I had my meter stick the right way. So we're looking at about 25.2 uh, centimeters. Let me try that again, because I think I might have moved. But... That sounds pretty good. Let's try that again. Let's see if my measurement changes at all. 25, maybe more like 25.1. Eh, a millimeter off. Okay, so let's do these measurements. So um, 0.251 meters, and uh, again, it's the same tube, so 0 0.038 meters is the, uh, the width of that, and so we're gonna do our measurement. All right, so we'll give this a try. Um, the tube diameter is still the same as the point uh, 0, 038. Uh, we're going to take 40% of the tube diameter. In fact, I don't know why I didn't uh, keep that measurement. So 0, 0.038 times 0.4 gives me a measurement of 0, 0.0152. Uh, okay, so 40% uh, of that is 0, 0.0152. So I'm going to wind up adding that every single time uh, to my air column length. So let's go ahead and uh, Let's see, we had an air column length of 0.251, right? So air column length of 0.251, but we are going to have an adjusted air column length of adding these two numbers together. So that's going to be the 0 0.0152 plus uh, 0.251. Oh, these numbers, dyslexia will throw you off, won't it? Uh, so that gives us 0.2662, okay, so 0.2662, and so one-fourth of the waves in the tube, and we're going to wind up multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 4, to get the wave length. So multiply that number by 4, and that gives us 1.065, let's say, 1.065 five meters as our wavelength. And so now we can find the speed of sound in the room uh, by taking that number and multiplying it by the frequency. That frequency is 320 hertz and 340 is our number. So we had a wavelength of 1.065, 1.065 meters times uh, a frequency of, we said 320, and 480.7.7. Okay, so 340, I don't know where that number came from, 340.7. So 343 is the actual speed of sound in this room. I had one measurement that was 350, one measurement that is 340. And as you can see, if I were to keep running this experiment time and time again, uh, we would get we'd be able to dial in a little bit closer and especially being able to uh, be a little bit more precise with your measurements 
that helps as well. Let's see if we can take this and kind of go in reverse. Let's take the speed of sound that we know and, um, and determine the frequency of unknown tuning fork, okay? Let's see if you can do that. So let's go ahead and take a measurement. Sixteen, sixteen centimeters. Sixteen centimeters is the air column length. You can find your adjusted air column length, and remember that the uh, width of that column is uh, is 0 0.038 meters still. So, what do you think? Do you think that you can find the speed of sound, or excuse me, from the speed of sound being three hundred forty-three meters per second? Can you find the frequency of that tuning fork? So, I'm going to. Uh, Probably let that be for a minute, and then we'll come back to it. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that and uh, leave it, leave it there, so you can figure that out. All right, that's it. And um, ooh, you know what? Just for fun, let's take that tuning fork, and I'll show you that next. Let me show you that next uh, harmonic. In fact, I don't even need this. Need that. I just want you to show you. There's the first one. Oh, there's the next one. All right, so we can use that as well. Right, we can take that measurement and take uh, four thirds, right? Three fourths of the wave is in the tube. We can multiply that by four thirds in order to get the entire wavelength. So that's it. Hopefully, that's uh, a good little lesson for you. You have a good one.